have an element material. This protects you from your face so that you don't get a thing on your face. This protects you from your hands and also put on gumboot so that you're protected on your legs. This is called a beast stand. You mount this hive here so that it's well mounted. It should be a distance of one meter from your, from the ground where you can operate it comfortably without any interference. It has somewhere you can also lock it for security purposes. It has a, somewhere you can put on a padlock. Somewhere you can put on a padlock. Then we have something like a plate here. Inside here we designed it so that you can put something like oil of grease, which is sticky. It helps to trap the ants that are trying the safari ants. Yeah, exactly. The natural uh, don't eat bees, but they can make the, the bees to go away because they don't care with them. Then we have a type of beehive called a Langstroth beehive. It's the most modern in the market, more durable, and you can actually harvest more honey, more than the previous one, which was called the Kenyan top beehive. It has four parts. This is called a brooder box. This is called a super box, and underneath here we have a wire mesh we call a pin excluder. Yes, and this one is called a drop cover. The purpose of the the purpose of the brooder box this is where the queen lives, and the main purpose is to lay eggs. So during your harvesting, at no single point you are allowed to harvest in the brooder box because this is where bees are being reproduced. <clears throat> Always so that the bee, the hive does not lack bees at any particular point. The queen excluder helps protect the queen from actually moving from down to up because her main duty is to lay the eggs. Then we have the super box here. This is where you can do the harvesting. If you compare this top bag here, this one is bigger than this because this is mainly meant for production purposes so that the queen can lay as, much, as many eggs as possible. So when, this, the, when the hive is installed, from the day the bees colonize it, it will take a period of three to four months mm -hmm. before you can do your harvest. And each harvest you can make between 15 to 20 kilos of harvest. Then we have this top cover. It's mainly to, to protect the hive from, from rain and also the sun. And then the feet. Underneath it, we have a, a board inside it controls the temperature. When this top cover heats so much, this one tries to control so that the hive does not experience high temperatures. I also have a smoker here. This one is used for harvesting. It helps to make the bees numb before you can do your harvesting. So when it's three to four months and you're ready to harvest, you put inside just sawdust. And sodas, and we use special soda because it does not give any smell to the honey. If you choose to use any other particular type of meal, you'll find that when you harvest your honey and try to taste it, you have an aftertaste smell of that particular tree or leaf that you're using. So you put here some soda and put in some some some, some charcoal that has as already fire. You close it for some time. When you start puffing out smoke, you just press the wind and the smoke comes out and goes into the hive. So once you have smoked your, your, your hive and the bees are now numb, they are no longer active, they cannot bite you, you use this called a bee brush, you brush them off. Because yeah. there will be so many here. Here is where the honeycomb is. The honeycomb is right Yeah, this the wire that to strengthen the honeycomb and actually align them. So you brush them off from both sides, then we use a particular tool we call a hive tool here. We use this basically because it's not sharp, because during the harvesting, you're not supposed to interfere with the foundation work. So you use this because it's not sharp enough, just hold it, then pass it through that point, pass it through that point. Then after that, actually empty it in a bucket, a food grade bucket. We also have this. Sometimes you can go to harvest, some of the combs are filled with water. Now the honey cannot drip off easily, so you scrub off using this before it's now hatch. Any question? Thank you. But they can have a few people to do the sample. How can I identify?
first one is put water in a glass. A glass. Real honey, when you drop it inside a glass of water, yeah. it should settle at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Unless you stir it, it's when it will mix with water. But if you drop it and it mixes with water, then that is not honey. You need more. You need more. Kitwingine, chukua matchstick, dip into honey. If you a matchstick, if you light it and it light, it's honey. So if it doesn't light, that is not honey. So I can sample, probably I, know, I may not be able to sample each one, but I can sample the teachers and maybe one cubic. Can it just sample? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can have one. <laughs> 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 okay, 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 okay. Sambo now we can give me the the and it's sweet, sweet in nature and somehow light in color. <laughs> How is it? Please explain it to us. It's good. Which one is that? I'll test for her. This one is called Kipa. <laughs> <laughs> harvested in Kenya, uh -huh. but not in arid and semi arid but places okay. like Kisi, Omega. <laughs> okay. How does it taste? It's different. It's not as sweet as Kisi. We have this island, not as sweet as Akesha and Kipa, harvested in highly forested areas in the border of Congo and Uganda, recommended for diabetic people. Uh, that one? This one. I've already explained this. Not as sweet as the keepers. We have the lemon and ginger. It's keepers that we have done. It's the keepers honey that we have done value addition. Because lemon and ginger are beneficial to the body, especially during cold. Now, rather than you mixing ginger and lemon differently, we have tried to do that specific ratio, then blended it with the honey to help in cold. The people who are having coughs. Uh -huh, how does it taste? Yeah. <laughs> how does it taste? Oh, Oh, please! I don't feel bigger. How does it taste? Just like no, no, no. Uh, come on. Lemon. Yeah, true. It's more or less.